Hi, welcome to Unit 2 of Week 3. And the topic for Unit 2 is learning resources. What are learning resources? Learning resources are learning materials required by the learners in gaining the defined skills or knowledge, which could be in form of content, tools, and environment that will aid learning and knowledge mastery. These resources help learners assimilate and apply the learning gift. Now, let us look at the different form of learning resources. First, let's look at content. In the form of content, it could be a form of magazines, textbook, course material, lecture, those speeches, and other relevant reading materials. Also looking at content, it could be a form of illustration or animations and images. And you could have recorded videos or you have live television or radio programs. You could tell the students to watch a particular television program or listen to a particular radio program. And you come to the class to discuss it or live session as an online learning to talk about it or you give assignment based on that. Then you have recorded television or radio program. You could also record a clip from a radio program or a television program and use it as a learning resource for your students. Then we have audios that you can use. They will have films, variety of films. It could be uh, maybe something they could go to and have a physical show of it or they could watch the film digitally. Now let us look at the learning resources are tools because you have tools too as learning resources. Here we start with the chalk that we know long ago. We have the duster, we have the board, all kinds of board. It could be computer software, it could be laboratory tools, and it could be basic writing or drawing materials as well as pencil. Uh, talk about because you may have a particular pencil, pen that is required or drawing board that is required. All these are part of uh, learning tools that you may need. Or multimedia, or you talk about internet and internet bandwidth, and you look at computers because you might need it, and you have laboratories. There are different forms of laboratories that could be required to run a particular course of our learning to take place. So these are some of the things you need to put in place. Then again, let's look at the online digital tools further because your online digital tools are further uh, classified into three major parts. We have online digital tools as connection and communication tools because there are tools that you require for you to be able to connect or communicate. And this is required in online learning. And some of these tools are actually useful when it comes to live section or real time sections, such as Zoom. Google Meet and Microsoft Teams. Then we have another uh, classification as collaboration and creation. Because when you connect and you communicate, you may have a need to collaborate with one another or create your own content. And one of such that is often used is the canvas and another is the Adobe Suite. Then you have a classification again that will refer to as practice and assessment tools. In this case, you need the learners to be able to practice what you have told them to learn or to be able to master the skill or knowledge. In this case, they could use the Google Form or ELD Puzzle. There are quite many. They go beyond this. But these are just few ones that we are mentioning right here. Then let's come to the learning uh, resources again, the environment. We have talked about two of them. We have looked at the content. We have looked at the tools the third one is the learning environment in the learning environment you have the face to face you have the online you have the hybrid these are the three major learning environments that we have so when you want to create a resource you have to actually decide which of the learning environment that will be required for that resource that you want to use now in there are characteristics for classifying the learning environment. The learning environment characteristics centers on three major parts. We have the learner-centered, we have the knowledge-centered, and we have the assessment-centered. When you are looking at the knowledge, the learner-centered, the learner-centered is give close attention to the learner. The attention is on the learner. 
whereby the knowledge center focuses on helping students learn with deep understanding so that they can apply the knowledge gained in a similar or different context. Then you have the assessment center. The assessment center simply focuses on what the learner can do with what he or she has learned. And these are the three major areas that are the focus. Then what to consider when choosing learning resources? What are the things you should consider? First and foremost, you look at the competencies. In the area of competencies, it could be the program competencies, the course competencies. You have to look at the competencies required. You have to look at the characteristics of the learners. And why do you need to look at the characteristics of the learner? There are so many things that are involved when you want to choose the learning resources. You look at the age factor. You look at their learning ability. You look at their level of um, uh, reading. You look at the, the level of learning because some of them are high learners, some of them are slow learners. Then you look at the learning outcomes as well. Look at the learning activities that have been prescribed for that particular learning. Then the learner access to the resources because you could have a very good resource, but the learner have no access to it. So you must be able to find out if the resource you are prescribing, yes, it is good, will the learner have access to those resources? And if they will not have access to the resources, you have to pick a resource that they will have access to and they will be able to use because usability is another thing that is key. Then the type of learning environment is equally very important because the type of learning environment will determine the kind of resources that will suit that learning environment and their learning styles, which I've already mentioned when looking at their characteristics. So these are key things you need to consider when you are working or you want to choose a particular learning resource. So in this case, we have equally look need to look at the importance of learning resources why are we concerned about learning resources first is that learners can apply knowledge learn into real life situation when you use appropriate learning resources they'll be able to apply the knowledge learn secondly it help learners conceptualize knowledge learn not only will they apply it but they will be able to conceptualize it in another environment. They will be able to use it or in a different situation. They will be able to apply it. Then it makes learning more relevant and meaningful. Now, in summary, one can say that learning resources help learners to gain the fine skills and knowledge. Learning resources could be content, tool, and environment. There are three major types of learning environment, face-to-face, -face, online, and hybrid. Learning resources are useful in bringing what is learned into real-life situation. With this, I say thank you for listening.